The views on this page do not necessarily represent the views of Mac News 144. Mac News 144 is committed to keeping this page an open platform for all Israel. Thank you all for subscribing and submitting your videos to Mac News 144 at gmail.com. We have grown to over 100 subscribers so we can begin to stream live. Praises to the Most High Yah. I'm just begging them to forgive us because we sold them. Our forefathers sold their brothers and sisters. I'm not the person to talk to them. No, may their souls rest in peace, perfect peace. They should forgive us. They should. Thank you. Yeah. I feel so sad. So I came up on a spot on the bank, um, and with the tide so low, they're these huge, smooth mud banks. They're just perfectly smooth. So when you see a log or a stump sticking up, you know you, you see it right away. This was wholly different. Uh, it looked like a giant dinosaur backbone arcing up out of the mud. And I was still hundreds of yards away when I first saw it. As I got closer, you know, it came more and more in, into focus, and I realized there was a huge uh, group of wood up in the front, which was clearly the bow of a ship. I mean, I could tell immediately. Um, it had that classic, you know, ship shape. <laughs> uh, so as I pulled up and got within a few feet of it, still on my boat, I got very excited. These folks were sort of adrift down here in coastal Alabama. They ended up working, uh, making a little bit of money. Some had learned trades during their time as slaves, um, and they farmed. They actually bought some land, and they bought it from the, the steamboat captain slash plantation owner who brought them here, who kidnapped them here to, to America. They bought some land from him, and they made a community called Africatown. Some of the descendants of the original slaves brought on the Clotilda actually still live there. So the reaction here has been really powerful. Um, I, I am getting a stream of emails from people who say, you know, my great-great-great-grandparents were on that ship. Uh, the last survivor died in 1935 in Mobile. He was 94 years old. Um, so, you know, it's a very powerful reaction here. My, my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents and great-grandparents uh, live in this community. They were some of the uh, pioneers of this community. And, and as a matter of fact, they was in this community uh, when the Clotilla landed. Uh, so uh, it's a dream come true for us because 
uh, I've heard of this for 70 some years. That cargo that was on the flotilla uh, survived, mingled, uh, strived, and made a difference in this community and in Mobile County as a whole. And I'm always happy to tell this story because as I tell this story, tears can come falling out of my eyes unbeknownst to me because I feel their spirit saying, tell this story. Somebody else needs to hear this story and be glad that this story is being recognized in this day and time. That wasn't just a fluke. It was a real story. It was a real adventure for them to join us so far to a place they knew nothing about. But now it can be their story can really be told if they find that ship. And it would mean so much to the attractions and how people would view this area. It would be like a highlight for Mobile. This is no celebration. This is a recognition of history. Make no mistake about it. I'm not celebrating the fact that we found a ship possibly that trafficked human beings across the ocean. 110 were brought here, but we don't know how many died along the way. So please know this isn't a celebration. This is a recognition. So I came to this spot because I had been told this is where the wreck lay uh, by an old man who grew up with his riding past here with his father saying that's the wreck of the Clotilda. And seeing this sort of dinosaur backbone ridge coming up out of the water and with all these giant iron spikes um, and then charred wood and I just had this overwhelming feeling of that's the final resting place of the Clotilda. This is where that journey came to this desperate end with the slavers, Timothy Mayer and, and Captain William Foster, realizing that you know they might well end up in jail uh, for this crime they've committed. And what a crime, uh, bringing 110 people across the ocean to enslave them for no reason other than a bet. You know, these were already rich men. They just did this to prove they could do it. Those guys are just trying to save their own skins as they light this thing on fire. You know, the archaeologists were speculating there may still be manacles um, and other evidence of the slaving down here in the hole, things that wouldn't burn, you know, iron. Do you have anything like the actual stern post back there? It's probably a pretty good ways back. Wow, this is something. You can see the chain plates that were on the foremast, and that means the foremast set approximately your stem is still intact and also with a, a large chain plate attached in it. That carried up to the bowsprit. Your planking came along these frames and laid into that inner keel. Uh, this appears to be a part of the bow that has collapsed and fallen in and it actually has a grown knee in it. And that connected these two timbers together. Uh, this could have been part of the uh, main framing for the deck just in front of the mast. We have a man-made plank. It could be part of a deck beam that burned. It could be part of the uh, decking itself. And then after it burned somewhat, it fell in the water and extinguished. And then again, you can see the charred remains of it. This is in the era of the uh, 1850s to 1880s. And with the evidence in the stem, we can figure out where we're at in terms of hull preservation and probably get an idea of the rig based on those chain plates. And then say it's likely to be a schooner, so that's good too. Yeah, I think you can definitely say maybe and maybe even a little bit stronger because the location's right, the construction seems to be right for the, t the proper time period. Um, it appears to be burnt, um, so it's, I would say, very compelling, sure. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there's. Uh, Nothing here that that's saying the wrong time period. That from the things that I know about. I mean, four meters, twenty centimeters. 
That's pretty close to right on. Yeah, it is. Good, good beam. Well, if it, if it turns out to be the last labor, it's going to be a very powerful site for many reasons, you know. I mean, the, the, the structure of the vessel itself is not as important oh, as its oh. history and the impact it's going to have on many, many people. Just to see it, even in this dilapidated state, it's just uh, remarkable. It really is. I'm, I'm touched. And not to mention the, the human cargo, it was all part of a bet. So that's, uh, I'm touched. It's the Mac, 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 it's the Mac.